Hey everybody, we're going to be uh, painting the roof on Dan French's 57 and we're going to do a video lapse of it and uh, show you how we do this. Before we get started, I want to show you something. Um, I usually like to get new paint suits when I shoot, especially um, doing white. <laughs> Anything that gets in the white, you'll, you're, you're going to see it. Some colors, if something happens, you can kind of get away with it. Well, you don't get away with it white. Actually, even black, because black is a void, and any particulates that get in that, you can actually see that too. Beyond that, pretty cool paint suit. It's a 54M because I'm 5'7". And I like this style of paint suit over the Tyvek ones, especially being in Florida. The Tyvek ones are great insulators, not an issue, but you do sweat to death in them. This at least, you can see the fabric, it's almost like see-through. So you can, um, it breathes, it breathes pretty well. Still sweat a little bit, but not bad. This is 100% polyester and anti-static. So that's pretty cool. Okay, as with all paints, um, in terms of paint jobs, um, we run a lot of cars through here, so everything gets labeled. <laughs> so as you can see, I always quick label so we know what gallon to pull from for the job. When the job is complete, the owner has an option to pick their paint up if they want. I don't keep anybody's parts or pieces or materials. If they would like to request them, they can have them all. And that way, especially with like what we like with chroma base, is that it keeps a long time in a cabinet. Uh, I've had stuff uh, up to about 12 years, and you can reshoot it, and it looks great. No issues. Just don't activate it, and don't freeze it. Don't overheat it. Just keep it in a nice, steady environment. But it will last a long time. Coverage on this is pretty dang good. It's very forgiving. I like Chroma Premier as well. Um, I've shot other brands and products, but uh, we deal with what my jobber sells and then um, we go from there. Uh, the reason why we stay loyal with our jobber is because we are people loyal, we're not brand loyal. If they were selling us PPG, we'd be probably shooting PPG here. So with that said, you know, what's in the name? Nothing's in the name. What matters most is how people treat each other. And that is paramount to me. So. With that said, they're very good to us, we're good to them, we love their products, we love their support of our paint. Okay, put these in the shaker, I'm going to chem down the car, and then we're going to set up for paint. As with all Chroma Base products, uh, they are a one-to-one -one mix, so your base coat color is going to be one part. You're going to follow up with a base maker. So one gallon actually makes two gallons. So you're going to do one part of this. So one part of that gallon, one part of your base maker. Notice the last two digits here are 85. That's your temperature range. They make 7175, 7165, and 7195. Those are all different temperature ranges. Next thing you want to do is an activator. We use a 12305. And the 12305 is a great activator. What it does, it causes a better binding effect with the base coat to the substrate and to itself. So you it's optional on Chroma Base. Chroma Premier, it's absolutely necessity that you use this. If you do not, you'll pull the paint apart. It's designed to have an activator used but we like to use an activator in all our base coats. It makes it a percentage stronger. Plus, when I put the clear on, it uses the same activator again. So when you bind into, it makes a perfect bond you can't pull. I usually keep one of these. It's a simple thing you can buy from Amazon in a paint booth. And the reason why I use this, it tells me the outside temperature and the humidity and then our inside so you can see right now we're climbing right now I got the booth up it's getting nice and warm in here we're gonna see here this is gonna climb over that and then our humidity as the temperature climbs is going to decrease well why is this so important in a paint booth because the parameters of what you are spraying at actually dictate how this is gonna flow out on the car 
If I had 78% humidity at this point, which is a threshold for clear before it starts to actually get funky and start to cloud up, um, if I shot it in that parameter, I'd be screwed in terms of the paint job finish. But since I'm lower here, it indicates me that I'm good to paint. And this is perfect paint weather for me right now. It's absolutely perfect. So with that said, I just wanted to show you why do I keep this in here and why do I have one out there as well? And it just feeds the data across here wireless. Um, it's because I need to know what I'm going to be spraying at in this booth. Okay, just a quick shot. You can see the light reflection into the primer because it's already been 600 real fine wiped. I'm going to wipe it again. We wet the panel down to verify that there's nothing going on with it. So we are pretty much set. Okay, liner, simple. Put it in there. I'm going to keep these for later because we're going to be using these for base coat clear. Okay, but this is what's really cool about using the 3M paint preparation system. The liner and this are disposable, which means it cuts down the cleanup. Plus, in the old days when we had to strain them, we don't have to strain them anymore because if you look real closely, you can see the strainer in there. That's really cool. If you need to wait a little bit to store them, they come with these neat little caps. You put the cap on there. And there you go, you can store the paint. I like to store them this way to keep the strainer from drying out and getting crap in it. Because if you ever shoot one of these after you've left it this way for a couple hours, you may get some stringy crap that's starting to activate already. Little tip. Gun we're using today is a 1-4 tip. Nothing special, Technic Pro Light. Some people would hate this video just because I'm showing this. That's okay. It works really well with Chroma Base. Get a nice professional finish, and I get a good throwdown and less in the air with that gun. It's pretty efficient. Not too bad for an HVLP. Antara Final Tack Cloths. Now, there's all different types of tack cloths. I like to use a Final Tack Cloth. E4141. What this does here is anything that I've swiped across everything, it'll pull it out. It's got a little bit of paraffin, act, a paraffin wax. Say that three times fast. Now, as you saw me wiping down, you only get so many shots of the title. If you look, one, two, three, four, and you can flip it and go to the other side as well. Be careful of swiping it more than once. And then don't use a lot of pressure. You're just supposed to just glide across, and that's it. Make sure that is locked in there. As you can see, it's locked in. Make sure your lock ring is tight too. Okay, we're all set. Next up, always, always, always spray out. Make sure you have a good spray out pattern. It's on the back wall over there. I'm gonna use that little test sheet. Make sure it's good because what goes on there will go on here. We don't wanna start here first ever. Always spray out, even between coats. <laughs> full wet I edged out
Okay, last coat of primary white. Um, we've got three down, and we got two more to go with the pearl. Okay, now we got three coats of the base coat, primary white down. Now we're going to go with the pearl top coat. We're gonna do two full wet, and that'll be it. Our parameters are really good. We're sitting at 86 degrees, 37% um, humidity. Perfect spray, no issues. And our clear coat's ready. 3130, 72, 200. Three parts, one part activator. 30% of the overall. Let's go shoot the car.
everybody. So we're just done. You can see the makeshift camera uh, I have for this phone. <laughs> a little bit of automotive tape and um, some generic stand from Amazon. Anyway, it works. And I was able to shoot through that window there. So you saw us doing, um, let's see here. One, two, three. One, two, five, coats base, three coats clear. Let's go check it out and see what it looks like. Okay, the roar you hear is the paint booth. It's pulling down from the top, and you can see it moving in the paper. So that's what she looks like. Let's take a quick gander. Now, now I shot the roof. Now I'm going to recycle the quarter windows and the jam. Uh, the reason being is because it's a pain in the neck to get this full coverage. So we're going to back tape, blow the paint in like they did on the factory on the other side as well, and then just rehit that real light. But the roof is done. It's up to Lee now to take out anything that I screwed up on in there. And that's three coats laid just now. Now it's gassing off, which means the clear is dying back. It's the gas off time now for the clear. If And I, I did half hour intervals between each coat. Now if I didn't do that and I started laying it on, I would have solvent pop up the wazoo. It would be real bad. It would be expensive recycle. 12 hours is not what I want to do on my list. I want this one and done. Just text it Lee. See if I can get him in here and uh, have him knock it out. Everyone, thank you for checking in, subscribing, and liking what we do. I don't just paint cars. We've just been in a paint mode. Um, the next one to probably get in is uh, Eleanor. Yeah, uh, we got to do a paint reveal on that one. Uh, I need to get all your help for us on this channel to come up with an answer, and we'll have a little contest or something or a giveaway. I think that would be really cool. Everyone, again, thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.